there are animals on this planet that can regrow parts of their bodies. And I know you probably think that you know what I'm talking about, but there are levels to this conversation. Of course, there are animals that can regrow arms and legs and tentacles, but there are also animals that can regrow life supporting stuff like brains and gills and spines and heads. Animals that split into two and become two different animals that crawl off in different directions. Okay, I don't actually know what directions they crawl off in, but that is wild. And among all of these amazing creatures, I found one that keeps me up at night. One that makes me stare off in the distance and contemplate the meaning of existence. It's called Turritopsis dornii, AKA the immortal jellyfish. To help us really wrap our heads around how unbelievable this is, I have to explain jellyfish reproduction, which is not a sentence I thought I'd ever say, but here we are. Please follow me. Jellyfish are either male, female, or hermaphrodite. Either way, when they're ready to make babies, they spray sperm and egg into the ocean and cross their tentacles hoping that something gets fertilized. When a jellyfish egg is fertilized, it grows into what's called a planula, which is basically a blob looking thing that just floats around the ocean looking for something to latch onto, like a rock, the ocean floor, a cargo ship. Then this newly attached planula grows into what's called a polyp, which is an organism with a stem and a mouth that just kind of looks like a plant almost. I don't know what I pictured when I pictured jellyfish reproduction, but it definitely wasn't this plant looking thing. Anyway, the tentacles on this polyp have one job, which is to trap food and bring it into the mouth hole. We are talking about one individual organism. But here's the thing, eventually that one organism, that polyp, buds off jellyfish clones that just float into the ocean. That's just regular jellyfish. Regular jellyfish go through this cycle. They hit maturity and live beautiful lives until they're eventually eaten or die of natural causes and are eventually eaten. Then there's Turritopsis dornii. When Turritopsis dornii is threatened with a predator, starvation, injury, or old age, it literally reverses its life cycle. The best way to describe it is if a butterfly could turn back into a caterpillar, or if you turned back into an embryo because you were scared or somebody hurt you. The immortal jellyfish undergoes these changes at a cellular level, reversing its body until it turns back into a blob, back into a planula that floats around the ocean looking for something to latch onto until it eventually gets to turn into a polyp and butt off new jellyfish clones that start the cycle again. So far, the immortal jellyfish is the only creature that we know of that can go from a planula, a larval state, to a mature state, a fully grown medusa, back to the larval state, over and over, seemingly indefinitely. This completely challenges our understanding of aging and how cells work. But the thing that keeps me up at night is this question of, if this process creates clones that can then create more clones if they're threatened with death or injury, then how many genetically unique Turritopsis dornii are there? Are there any genetically unique Turritopsis dornii or is there just one master jellyfish that is the ultimate blueprint for all the other ones. I should, I should probably get some sleep.